Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Middlewood High School. This is a video on empirical and molecular formula. All right, um, we did these in class. This is a bit of a recap. Um, the structural formula simply shows the structure of the compound in question. Now, this compound right here is hydrogen peroxide, right? And uh, this is how it's arranged. So the structural formula shows the arrangement or, st or structure of atoms in the compound. The molecular formula, on the other hand, shows the actual number of atoms in the compound. So, from as you see here, hydrogen peroxide has two hydrogens and two oxygens actually in it. All right. Now, the empirical formula it represents the lowest. Whole number ratio of the compound. So if you have, right, the actual number being H2O2, right, and if you reduce that to the lowest whole numbers, you will simply get HO as your empirical formula. So once again, structural, actual arrangement, molecular, actual number of atoms in the compound, empirical the lowest whole number reduced form now you can be asked questions like this okay so what you're gonna do you can pause the video really quick and try them okay on um, the first one p406 is quite simple we see that we simply in terms of getting the empirical formula we need the lowest common divisor and in that case it's gonna be two so you'll simply get p2 because two into four is two O three, okay. There's that guy right there. Is your answer? Um, for the next one B to C six H nine, the lowest common divisor will be three, so you will simply get C two H three as your empirical formula. Now this one here looks a bit tricky, but all you have to do is just add up each element. You have one plus one. That's two carbons, right? You have two plus another one here. That's three. Okay, two is five, you have six hydrogens. So we have C2, H6, and we have two oxygens right there, O2 in the formula. So they want the empirical formula of that. So our lowest common divisor will be two, so you'll simply get C, H3, O as your empirical formula. And this one right here, we cannot reduce that guy anymore. So this empirical formula, this right here, let's get this formula as it does given, is also empirical. This is a molecular, but it's also empirical. So you'll simply get BrCl2 as your answer. So you, this is an instance where you have a molecular guy also being empirical. Um, these right here, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip. You can do those. If you notice, the lowest common divisor is 2 for each of them. So you can knock those out. Now, you can be also given, guys, a question like this, okay, where they ask you to write the molecular formula, okay, for a certain uh, setup. Now, there's AMUs, atomic mass units, right? Now, they say over here it's equivalent to the molecular mass. Now, once again, guys, remember, we use grams per mole when we use molecular mass, right? So, AMUs and grams per mole are equivalent. One is a micro scale, AMUs is a microscopic scale and grams per mole is a macroscopic scale, so we don't really gonna panic because the numbers will be the same. Now, if you're asked, right, to give the molecular formula, right, and they give you the empirical formula and they give you the molecular mass, all you simply do is follow these steps right here. You have the molecular mass, right, which is also known as a GFM, and you divide that by the mass of the empirical formula. All right. And when you do this, you will get some whole number. All right. You will get a whole number. So let's try in this problem. The molecular mass that they gave you in this problem is 70. All right. So 70 will go on top. Now, you will divide it by the mass of this guy right here, of CH2. Now, we know from experience, right, a carbon, we have one of them, and the mass is 12, right, on our reference tables. 
okay and we have hydrogens right and we have two of them and we'll use 1.0 for the mass of each of those guys so we have 12.0 and we have two right here and 12.0 plus 2 gives us 14 so 14 goes in the bottom right here 70 divided by 14 is 5 that will be our whole number now what we do with that whole number is we will multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by this whole number so what I'm saying is this we have our empirical formula right here CH2 right here we will multiply the subscripts by 5 this 5 is this 5 over here so our final answer right will simply be C5 okay because 5 multiplies there and H10 that will be our molecular formula and you're done you don't reduce it this is C5H10 that's our molecular formula and CH2 is our empirical formula for that guy. We move on. Okay, this other problem right here um, gives us NO2, okay, and they give us a molecular mass of 46. Okay, so as before, 46 goes in the top, and the mass of NO2 will go in the bottom. So we know from experience, or looking on the reference tables, that nitrogen. Uh, we have one of them and has a mass of 14, right? And we have oxygens, and we have two of them, and the mass of each is 16. So we have 14 plus 32, and 14 plus 32 just so happens to be 46, right? So 46 into 46 will give us 1. It's still a whole number, so we're not going to panic. And what's going to happen? NO2 gets multiplied by that 1. And it will give us NO2 as our final answer. So this NO2 over here, right, we just got, we just calculated, that's going to be our molecular formula, all right? But realize also this NO2 over here is our empirical formula. So you can have instances where um, you have a substance where the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same. Okay, folks, this is a brief video on empirical and molecular formula. It's quite simple. You have a structure formula showing your actual um, structure, okay, the arrangement. We have the molecular formula showing you the actual number of atoms in the compound. And we have the empirical formula, which is the lowest whole number reduced form. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Um, hope this video was a help. Take care.